Well, hello there, everybody. And that was a minuet by Reinagle. Maybe some of you already know that. Very simple uh, example of a minuet. And I thought today I would take the idea of teaching a minuet to a student, whether it's at the level that that particular piece is, because it's um, an elementary level piece, it's not particularly hard, um, or whether you're using the minuet with a more advanced student and using this particular example to highlight some of the features of a minuet. Now a minuet obviously um, is, appears in Baroque and classical and even in Romantic music. However, uh, this particular minuet is a classical minuet, so I'm just going to highlight some of the thoughts and ideas that I have about this particular classical minuet. So one of the features of a classical minuet is balance and symmetry. Those can be quite hard things to describe. So I often use um, photos or images. And one particular one I like is of, of a whole pile of rocks all just balanced one on top of the other. And for, um, for symmetry, I'll quite often show them a building with symmetrical features, windows, doors, etc because they get that a lot more than they would necessarily, you trying to describe it. But what does it mean? What does balance and symmetry mean in musical sound? Well, in this piece, we have um, four phrases and each phrase has got four bars in it. Obviously, um, each bar is gonna have three beats and that's something we'll come back to in a minute. So here's the first phrase. that is followed by the second phrase. Now, those two phrases can be thought of as question and answer phrases. Uh, why is it a question and an answer? Well, I, for this, I will often start by telling um, the children or whoever it is, um, tell a joke. I only have one joke that I remember, and that is, um, why do um why are there never any pills in the jungle uh the answer being because the parrot see them all and when you tell a joke if you listen you finish with a question why why are there never pi any pills in the jungle yeah and it goes up at the end um uh, because the parrot see them all <laughs> and it goes down at the end and exactly the same with musical question uh questions and answers the end of the first phrase goes up because it finishes on the dominant note have a listen. We guess what key I'm in yet? It's in C, by the way. Here we go. Starts on Do, C. There is. There's a so at the end, a dominant note. Now here's the answer. Back to the tonic here. So we have a question which ends on the higher note, ends on the soul, and the tonic note, which is the, did I say the right thing there? Here's the dominant note, ends on the soul, G in this case, and it goes to the tonic, ending on the C at the end. So question and answer phrases are one way that you can describe that to a student, depends on their um, level. Younger um, elementary students, I would just go as far as that. Intermediate level, we might talk about imperfect and perfect cadences, perfect opportunity for them to recognize that. Um, um, well, it's not quite the same, sorry, forget that bit. Um, I'm getting ahead of myself. So with, with older students or more advanced students, I might talk about antecedent and consequent phrases. So that's a very technical term. The antecedent is when it finishes on chord five. And the consequent is when it finishes then back on chord one to do with cadence, to do with phrases. So the cadence, hmm, let's not get confused here. The cadence obviously at the end of the, um, the first phrase, that is an imperfect cadence anyhow. And then at the end of the second phrase, there is a perfect cadence, five, one the end of the first phrase just to go back here we've got chord 2b to chord 5 that's our 
imperfect chaos. So it depends on what level you want to take this to, uh, how, how deep you want to go. As I say, if you're doing with elementary students, you're not going to talk about antecedent consequence. If you're doing it with advanced level, then you definitely would, and it would be a really good way of showing that. So that's still talking about balance and symmetry, remember. The other thing about it is the uniformity of the material. It's got crotchets, it's got quavers, and, um, and minims as well, dotted minims and the odd minim as well. Um, there's a lot of the use of a crotchet and four quavers. Have a listen to the first bar. Yeah. Um, and then in the fourth bar, you've got four crotchets and a quaver. As I say, a lot of uniformity. It doesn't do lots and lots of different things. It tends to do the same thing. And there is a simplicity to the harmony as well. So it uses chord one, it uses chord, um, chord four, as we've said, chord, chord two, chord five, and I think it also uses chord six, but nothing else. It's not adventurous. So that's very, very typical of the, um, the classical period. The sound that you want to get is a really clear one. So that needs to be typical of the classical style. To do that, you have to have um, develop neat and precise finger work. You're not going to want to hold things on an over legato, but very neat and precise. With that lovely lilt that you have in a minuet. It needs to be light and buoyant in style and in sound, and real have and it has hints, this one does, of the sparkle that the classical period has. So have a listen, for example, in the second phrase where the left hand is doing this. So to get that lightness, you want to bring out the lower note because that's what harmonizes with the upper note. Yeah. So the left hand is so important here. It has that little melody. What we don't want to hear is heavy that sounds. But instead, lighten off on that thumb on C, let the, let the thumb all, almost just glance over the C. And then a lovely detached feel to that um, little left hand um, octave move down there. So, just a, uh, uh, some, a little game then to finish with, because uh, one of the important things about the minuet actually is the fact that it, it should be felt in six. Now, if you dance the minuet, I'm just gonna push my stool back for a second. The dance of the minuet, and you can go online and, and watch it, and I'm actually gonna write a blog on this, which will be published on Monday, which will have a link to that dance. Um, and I'm not a dancer, but there we go. The dance is in six, and that's how we should feel it. So the dance goes one, two, three, four, five, six. And somehow you have to do something with your hands as well. So it's step on one, touch on two, three, four, five, um, touch on six. I'll do that one or two more times so you get the feel. And it's quite fun to go to go and do a bit of dancing, actually, in the lesson as you play. I'm just going to sing it. One. Do 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 da Yeah, and you can hear the phrases actually fit into those six beats. Do do three four five six one two three four five six. So in a minuet, you're always moving through the six. It's not one two three. But one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three. And hopefully you can hear. Now I'm going for that six. It's completely changed the sound of it and the way that I'm playing it. Final thing. A little activity that you can do with your student to get them to listen and used to hearing the piece but without them getting bored. You could almost do this at the very beginning to introduce it. 
and that's just a little body percussion. So again, working on that idea of six, why not do, and I'd like you to do this, and I'm going to play the piece all the way through, so I'll teach it to you first. So it's going to be, I don't know whether I'm reversed or not, but I'm going to tell you what I'm doing. Right, left, tap, clap, click, shoulders. One, two, three, four, five, six. Have a go. See if you can join in. Four, five, six. Right, left, clap, tap. Right, left, tap, clap, click, shoulders. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three. Keep going. Five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. by Reinigal, just some ideas for this specific minuet, but why not take those? Every student at some point will learn a minuet. See if you can take some of those and put them into another minuet. All right, I won't be around for the next couple of weeks because I really am moving house into my new house, but I'll see you in about three weeks from Yorkshire. Bye-bye.